Hello everybody, it's Jess here with Blush Jess. This is my husband David. Be kind and rewind. <laughs> little throwback to the 90s. How many of you had a Blockbuster card? I did. <laughs> I don't know if I had a Blockbuster card, but I remember going all the time. All the time. Okay, so I feel like we haven't sat down and done a video in a while. It has been a while. It has been a while. But today we are doing our Universal Yums unboxing. This is one of our favorite videos we do every single month. You guys know we've been doing it over a year now. It's like a 20 minute date. Yes, it's awesome. And every month, Universal Yums will send you a different box from a different country, and they fill it with different snacks. Yep. How many times can I say different? Different. <laughs> they fill and it there are three different, uh, tr uh, what's the word? Sizes. Sizes or tiers. That's the word I was thinking of. Yes. Different tiers. We have the lower one, but we've tried all, we've tried some yep. of the bigger ones too. It's totally worth it. If yes. you have a bigger family, especially I'd recommend like the Super Yum or yeah. the Yum Yum box. We just have the regular Yum box. You mm -hmm. get like six or seven snacks. It's enough to just try some different flavors. Even the ones that aren't as good, we get a kick out of yeah. because it's hilarious. And it's another country. So you get, get to experience new things. It is a great price too. I think we pay like $14 and it's free shipping. Next we level up do, is... I don't remember, like 25 <laughs> 25. You always ask me this. I don't know. Um, <laughs> we do have a referral link. So if you like watching these videos and you want to try it, I believe you can get $5 off your next box by using our link down below. We love Universal Yums. It's something that before there was even referral links, we used Absolutely. and paid for yeah. every single month. It's totally worth it if you haven't tried it. Yay. If you have tried it, let us know what you think of this box down below. So we, we did we, I don't think we guessed last no, time. We, we had, no, we had clue. no clue. They give you a hint every month. And as we taste these things, we will rate them on a scale of one to five. Yay. Five being we absolutely loved it. One being, please don't ever put that in front of me again. Yes. So last time we had no idea, but a lot of you did guess correctly. And, and it's one of our biggest allies in a place I would love to go visit someday. South, South Korea. Korea, home I'm of the really world's excited. largest church. Fun fact. Oh, I did not know. Dr. That. Cho's church, over 1 million members That's in his crazy. church. That's crazy. That's crazy. So, what we normally do is I will pull off the snacks. David will tell us a little fun fact about each one, and we're going to taste it. Let's have our fingers crossed for a good, yummy box. Yay. Let's do it. Start off with. I'm not going to even attempt to say these words. <laughs> okay, yes, I am because I have to. Um. These are sweet and spicy wheat snacks called tiddly snacks. Oh gosh. See, I'm trying. There's like, there's, when you have more than there's two. There's a little like yeah. pepper man down there that says so hot on it. It's sweet and spicy wheat snacks. I like spicy. Freeze, you've been caught red handed in the best way possible. The red snack in your hand comes from famously bright red South Korean dish. When there's more than two continents, continents in a row, I don't know how to say it. Which means stir fried rice cakes. It may not sound appetizing baked based on that name, but during this dynasty, this dish was so special, it was called the Peace. There's that word again. I can't say it. And it was only served to royals. It's hard so to open. Oh, these are these are hot rice cakes, and before you tried before you tried the snack the snackified version of the dish, remember two things. The initial sweetness is deceptive. These crunchy yums have a serious kick to them. They oh, look great. Like, they look like a pasta. They look like a rigatoni or something. Or a cheese puff. So they're hollow. Oh, yeah, they look like a... Yeah. Okay, so these are hot. They are sweet. They're first is sweet. Mm -hmm. Here it comes. good. Here it comes. They have a kick at the end. Mm -hmm. That's not terrible. <laughs> when you swallow it, it really hits you first. Oh, wow. Right there. It's right when you swallow. I really like these, though. Ma'am. They're sweet. They almost taste like a cereal or something at first. They're sweet, sweet. Wow. But then that spice really grabs your throat. I'm going to say four. I, I really go, like I'll them. I'll go three. They're really good. I like them. Okay. Next, the green tea choco pie. These are chocolate-coated green tea cakes with marshmallow filling. The amazingness of a choco pie cannot be contained. Literally, the fa this famous chocolate-covered marshmallow-filled yes. cake Managed to traverse one of the most dangerous borders in the world, the one between North and South Korea. So I guess both countries oh. have this. Oh. It looks like a moon pie, you guys. It looks like a little moon pie. So it was formed in North Korea, but South Korean activists took one of these stands and they brought it to South Korea. Hundreds of them came together to send balloons carrying over 10,000 of these over their border to their hungry North Korean neighbors. We'll never know what became of those pies, but at least we can get a taste of what it's all about. So That's the, interesting. So the South Koreans wanted their northern neighbors to have it so much they ballooned the 10,000 oh, of them over the border. That? Okay, these look like moon cool. pies, right? They look like a moon pie. They do look like moon pies. No. 
I feel like a moon pie. But it's got green tea the, in it. The texture is exactly like a moon pie. I don't really like the green tea stuff, though. Oh, no. It's not bad. I mean, it's not terrible, but... It definitely tastes like green tea and a moon pie. I'll go two. Yeah. It's a unique experience, but I'll just go two. It's not bad. The chocolate really I'm helps. not a big fan of moon pies, either. I like moon pies, but I don't really like the green tea-ness in there. We'll see, too. But it's good. No, it's good. Okay. Choco Heim. Chocolate and hazelnut cream filled wafers. I think it's two of these. I think we said this in one of our previous videos. The entire world loves hazelnut. Yeah. In America. We do too, but I feel like we're late. We to the do, market. but outside of Nutella, I can't think of a major product I mean, out they there. Put, they put it in there, but in the rest of the world, we found that they are way more common. If you were with us the last time we went to South Korea, you might remember the hazelnut cream filled wafer. It was voted one of the favorites in the box, and that's why it's back. Sorry. So at first, we thought there maybe was too much vanilla wafer and not enough chocolate hazelnut cream, but we gave it another taste, and boy, were we wrong. There's just enough of the crunchy wafer to house the ooey-gooey goodness on the inside, so we thought, is there something off about it. the nutty cream filling? Nope. Oh. Another bad proof that these are perfect. The only flaw now, there's not enough of them. Okay, so they come in a four-pack, but we did get two of these. Mm -hmm. I just broke it in half. So there's Nutella inside, it, like this little tube kind of wafer. I guess so. Mm. I like that. That's really good. I had these like a wafer sandwich or something, mm -hmm. but it has Nutella kind of taste. Oh, really good. Instead of the normal wafer shapes, it has this. Yeah, it's like a little tube of it. Yeah. It's two double side by side gun barrel tubes. That is delicious. I agree. I love it. This is a five. Definitely a five. How can you go wrong with a wafer cookie and Nutella? You can't. It's delicious. Five. Almond pepero. Okay. I'm sure there's a, a, a Korean way to say it, but I don't know how to say it. At 11.11, many people stop to make a quick wish. We, Jessica and I, stop to say, I love you. We always say that at 11.11. If we catch 11.11. But in South Korea, the numbers signify something a little different. Pepero Day. Every, every November 11th, South Korea celebrates the holiday by giving loved ones these crunchy chocolate-coated sticks. How did this quirky tradition start? Some may have pointed to a 1983 news story about two girls at a South Korean middle school who exchanged Pepero in hopes that the slim-looking snack would make them become tall and thin. <laughs> How'd that work out for you? <laughs> this is like a girly thing to say. It's so popular oh, that look the at them, guys. They kind of look like Pocky, if you guys know what Pocky yeah. is. It's so popular it's that the holiday accounts for 50% of the annual sales of Pepero. So on our Veterans Day every year, they sell so much of this stuff. Veterans Day? Yeah, November 11th. Oh. 11-11. Okay. Are you ready to try it? Let's try it. <laughs> it's like little sticks that are dipped in almonds and chocolate. Oh, man. Wow. That's delicious. That's very good. It's like a breadstick kind of mm -hmm. cracker when they dip it in chocolate and almonds. That's good. That's delicious. I I'm going to say five. I ate my whole thing. That's a five. Five. Really, really good. It says Korea number one brand. I agree. Chocolate and biscuit. Really good. Korea, I'm liking you. Strawberry sweet and sour. There's nothing controversial about strawberry, right? Guess again, during the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyongyang, in Pyeongchang, an athlete on Japan's female curling team was photographed eating one of these. When she described the strawberry as surprisingly delicious at a press conference, she reignited a decades-old debate between Japan and South Korea. Japanese officials claimed that strawberries were rightfully theirs, and they brought the first strawberries to South Korea. But South Koreans claimed they worked hard to create a new blend of the Japanese varieties. So basically, they're strawberry. fighting over it. <laughs> Want to know what else is fierce? The sweet and soury flavor of the candy in your hand. It's juicy, chewy, and hopefully not too controversial. This kind of looks like a, a Starburst. Oh, oh, it's hard to, I will say it's hard to open. Maybe almost like a noun later? Yeah. Kind of like a cross between a Starburst and a noun later. Oh, yeah. They're hard like a noun oh, later. they're sour. Mm-hmm. Really good. It's like a strawberry who's extra chewy. It's I like an hour later. It's not too sour, but now and later is the right texture. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. I have a little bit of a kick of sour, though. I like it. But not bad. It's good. I kind of like it better than an hour later mm -hmm. and better than a Starburst. Not better than a Starburst, but it's definitely better than an hour later. Five for me. That's delicious. Mm-hmm. I love South Korea. 
I definitely want to go to South Korea someday. All right, what's that? Karbak. Chamsil Singwa. Again, I'm sorry. I'm doing the best I can here. These are soy sauce flavored rice crackers. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Well, if you like Oriental food, you got to like soy. I like soy, but I don't know about a cracker. You're about to get a taste of South Korea's rich history. And when we say rich, we mean it. Back in 1500 BC, rice was used as a currency in South Korea. So, chicken and money, if you like chicken and rice. It's like a baby mum mum cracker. <laughs> but don't think pennies. Think hundred dollar bills. Rice was considered such a luxury food that it was too valuable for common people to eat, wow. even the farmers that grew it. That's wow, crazy. have times have changed. No rice is like one of the cheapest things you can eat. For centuries, you could determine a person's social status just by looking at how much rice they had stored. That's crazy. Okay, every crispy <laughs> bite of this bursts with addictive soy sauce scrumptiousness. We actually think it's a good thing because these crackers aren't worth a ton of money because we feel bad about eating a bazillion dollars a minute. Okay, so, so they're they rice look crackers. Like little crackers. They kind of look like those like those things you give your baby, those mum mum. But things. they're coated in in saturated. I like soy, in sauce, soy sauce, but I like it in things. Yeah, you can smell it. Oh wow! It's soy. It's like if you took a cracker and you. Coated it, it. coated it in soy sauce. It's not, I just don't like that flavor by itself. I like soy sauce mixed in with sauces and stuff, but not by itself. The initial bite of it is pow, there's soy sauce, but then the more you eat it, it kind of subsides. I think it's like most of it on the outside. Yeah, but I'm. Ugh, I don't like it. No, I'm not going to go grill. I'm going to say one. I'll go two. It's not terrible, but I, I just don't uh, want I it. couldn't. I wouldn't want another bite of it. All right. Ugh. All right, now let's go to the Cosmos Choco Corn. Choco Corn Pop. Chocolate and coconut flavored corn puffs. Yum. Is this like a cereal? No matter how much you love chocolate or you don't, we guarantee you've never tasted it quite like this. This is a light, airy puff infused with chocolate and coconut inside and out, resulting in a totally unique product. So this is cocoa puffs with coconut? Hmm. Oh, it looks like a chocolate Cheeto. Look at it. Oh, so no, it's not it's cocoa puffs. It's like a, it's like a chocolate snack. Chocolate Cheeto. Yeah, it's like a snack. They have the right... What if we had... What if we had Cocoa Puff Cheetos? Chocolate was first introduced to the, during the Korean War when American soldiers it's patched okay. out their rations. So we brought chocolate to Korea. That's cool. Okay. This mm. I'm excited about this. It has a texture of a Cheeto. As it does. It like dissolves in your mouth more than like, I thought it was like cereal. It's, mm. like, a, it's like a cheese puff. That's what I just said. You said a Cheeto. Cheetos are crunchy. This is, this is more puffy. I meant Cheeto as in the Cheeto the cheese puffs. puffs. Yeah, these are definitely more puffy than the original. But that, that's I good. love these. There's just enough coconut to let you know it's in there without being It literally dissolves in your mouth like a cheese puff. This is my favorite thing well, so far. <laughs> that's the one thing I don't like about coconut <laughs> is that texture makes my throat scratchy. This is just an example of innovations. When we tried putting many things in this box, this one was our favorite. This is my favorite. This is my absolute favorite. You saw what it just did to my throat. That's why I don't like coconut. That texture gets in my throat every time. There's not actual, it's just flavor. No, the coconut's in it. It's in the inside of it. When you open it up, that the internal flex, that's coconut. Like the time, you can't even see them. It like dissolves. The chocolate's mouth. delicious. And like I said, the coconut's not overwhelming. I can eat this whole bag right now. That's good. Oh my gosh, that's so good. All right, we got two more candies here. Mm. Jeju Tangerine Jelly, which is a tangerine flavored gummy candy. This is no ordinary tangerine. This bright tangy orange hails from the South Korean island of Jeju, famous for its warm weather, gorgeous greenery, and vibrant blue water. Sounds like paradise. We can't bring you to this paradise. We can no, bring you a this. taste of it with the world-renowned Jeju tangerine, locally called, I'm not saying that. What makes it so special? The tangerines are grown in rich volcanic soil, making them sweeter and tarter than oh. any of the oranges in South Korea. This looks like a... So bite into the super soft jelly and get all the vibrant, sweet, and sour flavors of the real Jeju tangerine. This is in quotes. What are you waiting for? This looks like one of those uh, fruit slices yeah. or whatever, like a jelly candy. I don't have mine out yet. The texture is just like that orange candy. No, one of those orange, orange slices. Orange slices. That's okay. It's not as strong as I thought it would be. Mm -mm. Very lightly flavored. It's okay. It's all right. It's kind of waxy. Yeah. I don't have enough flavor. I'll go three. I'll say two. And okay. finally, Mamos rice candy. Rice flavored hard candy. Ugh. Hard candy flavored like rice? 
Don't think get Korea's big on rice. Rice candy? Why not? After spending a large hot summer growing in paddy fields, South Korean farmers are eager to use their crops in a variety of foods, no matter how unusual. So, this is a lightly sweet rice candy I'm gonna go ahead and put it on featuring my actual grains of South Korean rice. You're getting a delicious taste every time that, the, that you eat these of the... It really does taste like rice. It is crazy. Of the South Korean rice flavor. Wow. It tastes like rice. I mean, just not like bad, rice. but... No. It wow. tastes just like rice. Mm -hmm. How do they do that? Just like Oriental rice. Tastes just like it. Like sticky rice. You ever had sticky rice before? Yeah, that's what it tastes just like sticky rice. It tastes like jasmine rice or something. Maybe. That's how you can tell um, Oriental rice from the American rice. Oriental rice clumps in these little balls when you eat it. And that's why they use chopsticks to pick it up. Our, our rice, you can't do you, you, they're, they're, It's so grainy and just powdery. But yeah, and there's, you there's, see the little flecks of rice in there. Yeah. It's interesting. It's not terrible. It's, but it's not. For, for, I'm going to average this one. For experience alone, I'm going to give it a five. But for taste, I'm going to give it a one. So let's go three. I'm going to say it's like a two or three. I don't yeah. know. It's not bad. And it's I still just, can't eat these. I'll be eating chocolate things. We had a few, fav we had a few these favorites. These are my here. favorite. That's her favorite. Mine are the wafer with the Nutella in the middle. That was delicious. They need to bring these chocolate Cheetos to America. Because they are amazing. Technically, we brought it to them. Well, but Because we, we brought them they, the chocolate. They took the chocolate. And they, they threw made... their stuff in it. My other five is this thing. I love these now these now and laters. Oh, man. Type things. I love these things. So good. Really good. Wow. Okay. This was a good box. Mm-hmm. This was a great box. Next month's clue. So here's next month's clue. We're off to a country where magic is real, where the fiestas are lively and the coffee's ideal. There'll be tropical candies and bacon for your hungry mouth, so you better grab sunblock because we're headed south. Mexico? I guess so. The coffee's ideal. Colombia? Maybe Colombia. Guatemala? Mmm. Bacon. Mm. But magic. Magic makes me think Mexico. Where? Those chocolate puff things are my new favorite thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, this was an amazing box. Let me know what you guys think the next month is. Yeah, for sure. We se we seem to think it's Latin America, so it's some kind of Latin country because it's yeah, magic makes fiesta, it, fiesta so coffee, we, which is Spanish speaking, so tropical candy, bacon. bacon. I my gut says Mexico because they're big on pork dishes down there, and mm -hmm. so it's a lot of a lot of pig. I don't know. I don't know that that's true interesting we shall see mm -hmm. okay you guys yeah. if you like this video and you want to see more like it make sure you give it a big thumbs up leave us a comment down below also make sure you check out the link down below yes. and that will take you to universal yums to get your discount on your next box if you're a first time customer we would love to have you subscribe and join our youtube family and make sure you click on the bell when you do subscribe so every time this beautiful blonde bombshell posts a video you'll get notified immediately we love you guys we'll see you all next time bye everybody bye Tonight we're running on the right track